Thank you, Aradna. And as I was standing back there getting ready, she was giving me a pep talk. And she told me that uh, she wanted me not to talk like I normally am, formal, corporate, and so forth. And she actually said the words, can you channel your inner animal house today? <laughs> so I'll start this way. Hi. <laughs> I'm Dennis Shablonsky. Damn glad to meet you. Okay, enough of that. Um, I'm talking about the power of Pittsburgh this morning, and m most of you that know me probably think, here we go, another presentation about energy and the power of Pittsburgh energy campaign. But frankly, nothing could be further from the truth here this morning. I'm going to talk about a different kind of Pittsburgh power through the four Ps, through people and persistence that generate Pittsburgh power, a model that I think we can learn from and a model that I think the current world desperately needs to deal with the issues that we have to deal with. Now let me start by talking about uh, power. And I'm not talking about this kind of power, violent, hierarchical, in your face. I'm talking about the kind of power that can last, that affects change, the kind of power that those of us in the region refer to as Pittsburgh power. Now, I grew up, uh, I was born in McKeesport, I grew up in the South Hills, and I saw and witnessed and heard my father and other people talk about this my whole life. In the 50s and 60s, it was a growing, robust time. I can remember as a little boy going down on Saturday morning to, uh, to McKeesport while my father paid his bills, made his contacts with trains running, people all over the place, department stores. We had just come out of the, the Second World War. We were victorious. Pittsburgh was the center of the in, in, in industry that fueled all of that, and things were great. And our leaders worked on big issues. They worked on the air. They worked on the water. They worked on our urban core. And the two men that are most known for this are pictured on this slide, Davy Lawrence, R.K. Mellon. Uh, these two guys cleaned up the air, cleaned up the water, revitalized downtown Pittsburgh, just the two of them all by themselves. <laughs> well, even they wouldn't say that. They would say something quite different. What they provided was leadership. Uh, they got lots of people together. They convinced businesses to use ne new technology. They went grassroots, and they convinced people to convert coal-fired furnaces, which both of my grandparents had in their home, into natural gas and electricity. They created the first urban redevelopment authority, and, and in the process, they built, the, they built a momentum that resulted in our designation as being the most livable. And they worked on something over a long period of time persistence. They had a vision for a fountain at Point State Park. It was 30 years from the point at which that vision started to where the fountain actually turned on. Now you have to remember, David Lawrence was a Democratic mayor. R.K. Mellon was a Republican head of the Allegheny Conference in the business community, but they worked together. They shook hands, they went across that ideological divide, and they worked together to get things done. Unfortunately, as soon as their term of work ended, we went through another terrible dislocation. Uh, we went from a place that was vibrant to losing 100,000 manufacturing jobs, a quarter million people left this region, an 18.3% unemployment rate in 1983. But the model of R.K. Mellon and Davy Lawrence persisted. The public-private partnership and the leaders in that era got together and they worked together across the aisle. And we ended up reinventing again our businesses, our legacy business. We ended up creating whole new businesses from the wonderful research institutions and hospitals that we have. And we ended up continuing to invest in the quality of place and created the Pittsburgh that we, that we now know and live and work in today. I believe this soft power, as Mr. Nay said earlier this morning, is something that America is yearning for. I believe particularly from our political leaders, people want collaboration. They want common ground to be found. They want us to work together in solving the problems, not protecting political, uh, political parties. And capitals from our national to our state to our local, this is what people are looking for. I believe the Tea Party, I believe the Occupy movement are symptomatic of the frustration that people feel over this issue and the demand that they're having for a different way of doing things. How do you do it? It starts very simply by extending your hand, by saying, I'm willing to work with you. I'm willing to find common ground. We, these problems are our problems. They're not Democratic problems. They're not Republican problems. They're not business problems. They're not community problems. They're problems that we all face. I think the Pittsburgh model 
of people and persistence generating Pittsburgh power worked. It worked here. I think it can work nationally. And more than ever, I think we need Pittsburgh power right now. Thank you.